Hi everybody, it's Faith. I am doing uh, my follow-up video from my last one. It was That one was pre-surgery. And this is my post-surgery video to let everybody know how things went. Um, and just to cover, okay, so uh, surgery I'm talking about is called MVD, which is microvascular decompression surgery. I did it specifically for uh, something that I have called hemifacial spasm on the left side of my face, um, or HFS. As, uh, as we refer to it in the community. Um, some people also have the um, MVD for uh, trigeminal neuralgia, which is a much more painful condition than my HFS anyway. Uh, but this, in this case, I had it for HFS. So I just wanted to do a follow-up video to let everybody know um, how the movement is with my face, how things are going for me, um, and to just talk a little bit I'm going to try to keep it to a little bit about what my recovery was like from the surgery itself. Um, as you can see, it, like I said, it's been four weeks um, and I am feeling fine. Um, <clears throat> I'll just go through, first of all, where I had it. Okay, so I had it at the um, UPMC Presby facility in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania with Dr. Sakula. Um, and I live in Kansas City, so I flew there and, and then flew home. For it. I was there for a week. Actually, a little bit under a week. So my surgery, um, I went, actually I was there for a week when I think about it. We flew out on Saturday. I had uh, my MRI test on Sunday and then Monday I had other tests and met with Dr. Sakula to confirm uh, whether there was a compression or not and whether we would move forward with the surgery, which we decided to do, thankfully. So um, he found the compression. I might have cried a little bit. I was very excited um, that he found it and that he was able to see what he needed to do. Um, we did surgery on Tuesday morning, and um, and then I was in the hospital actually only until Wednesday afternoon. And at that point, I went back to the hotel. I uh, rested there, paid attention to myself, made sure everything was okay. We actually had planned to fly back home on Friday, um, but I had a weird side effect that I'll talk about here in a little bit. Uh, we wound up not flying home until Saturday. So anyway. Um, surgery was very early in the morning on Tuesday. I woke up spasm-free, and then I was spasm-free until Friday evening, so um, all day Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, Friday night was when I started getting some spasms back again. Um, as you can see, I do have the spasms happening um, more regularly. I'll talk about that as well here in a little bit. Um, but right now what I just wanted to talk about was um, how good I'm feeling after four weeks. I am 44 years old. Um, I am in relatively good shape. Uh, I work out a lot. I, well, I could work out more. I'm just going to say that, but I work out a lot. I do a regular, um, regimen of cardio as well as weight training with a personal trainer. So I prepared myself pretty well going into surgery to make sure that I was in the best shape that I could be, um, or as good a shape for me anyway, um, going into it cardiovascularly and, um, and just taking care of, of, you know, where I was at fit wise, uh, so that I would have a better recovery, um, after, Working out is very important to me. It's very important to my mental health. So um, not being able to work out for uh, any extended period of time was something that really bothered me, kind of freaked me out. Some of the people on the support board on Facebook know about this because I posted about it and said I was having a very hard time not getting uh, back into my workout routine just two weeks after the surgery. Um, there is a lot of tiredness that goes along with the recovery. Um, it can come out of the blue. It can happen... Uh, very suddenly, but you know, once you take a nap, I, don't, I, don't, I feel better. So I don't know why I couldn't work out. Um, I didn't want to do anything to compromise my recovery, of course. So that was that was my concern. Anyway, so um, just FYI, I'm back at my regular workouts at this stage. I'm not regular, regular. I, I I'm kind of ramping up in my, both my weight training as well as my cardio routine for a few weeks here, just to make sure that I don't overtax myself. Um, <clears throat> I'm still having some pain. Um, I still get a little bit of lightheadedness now and then. The lightheadedness actually was the feeling that carried through for the longest period of time following the surgery. Um, lasted me probably a little bit more than two weeks. Um, and it's just a, I don't know how to describe it. I could drive fine. I felt fine. I wasn't dizzy. It's just, it was just, uh, ooh, you know, a little bit lightheaded. Um, and that, like I said, carried through for a little bit. I'm not feeling it anymore. I'm feeling um, some pain here and there. I actually haven't taken any, let's see, I took pain medication this morning at 6 a.m., uh, which is a combination for me of Tylenol and Advil. It is currently about 4.30, and 
and I'm feeling okay. The one feeling that carries through with me throughout the day is that I get a little bit of a tightness um, in between my, from my, my incision point all the way down my neck. And I can show you the incision. Um, I don't think, I don't think it shows up very well here on my camera, but you can, I'll try to turn here so you can see. I'll point it out. This is where it's at. Um, Dr. Sakula closes with glue. Um, and so it doesn't show very well. Like people, I have to point it out to them even in person. Um, they're saying that they don't, they don't notice it. So, uh, the glue closing is actually a really great way to go. Um, anyway, so let's see. I, I, let's see, I woke up from my surgery on Tuesday morning. Um, it lasted about, they said three hours, but really it was from the, the time that I was wheeled back at 7 a.m., that was when they, they were starting it on the dot to the point of through the surgery and then through recovery that they considered the entire time of my surgery, I guess. So when they say three hours, it was really the period of time that I was in the operating room, as I understand it, was a little bit more than an hour and a half. So that wasn't too terrible. <laughs> Dr. Zagula had me up and walking uh, within about, near as I can recall, about 20 minutes after I woke up. Um, he wanted me out of bed and moving, which was great for me because I was very warm and I'm a sweaty person. So, um, I was dealing with what we call swamp ass. So I wanted to get out of bed and I was really, oh, I, they must've run water down me or something. I was very, my hair felt puffy and water filled and whatever. So I also had some blood. Um, there'd been a couple of nicks on my face from, I guess, different points. They test, um, throughout the, the, um, surgery itself while I was asleep. I don't know. I had a, a scratch over here. And then there was something right on the inside of my lip that apparently had bled. So Dr. Sagula helped me wash my face. And um, I went ahead and just walked around a little bit, felt fine. He was guiding me. I also didn't have my glasses on and I couldn't see anything. So I needed his help anyway. Um, after that, we went to, to the hospital room and I just was dealing with, uh, with some very lovely nurses. Everybody at UPMC Presby is awesome. Um, very confusing hospital. There was a lot of anxiety leading up to um, the the appointments that I had, like the MRI. Actually, not so much that on that MRI day. That was a really easy day to find where we needed to go. But Monday, with all the tests that I needed to do for my hearing and meeting with Dr. Sakula, um, and then going and getting pre-op blood work and stuff done on uh, later on Monday. It was just it, there's a lot of elevators, you guys. There's a lot of elevators and there's a lot of people. And there's a lot of hallways and it can get very confusing. So um, do not be afraid to ask. <laughs> there's so many nice people there uh, and everybody is super nice. So it, everyone that you stop, even I think if anybody had stopped me after a couple of days, I might have been able to help them a little bit better than that first day that I was there. And I would have been happy to help them. Um, but anyway, it's a great hospital. Uh, really enjoyed my time there. Um, the nurses were fantastic. So they were the ones, the nurses and the resident that was in charge of my recovery there for the first day. I didn't see Dr. Sakula after that walk after surgery. Um, I was seeing a doctor whose name was Dr. Pierce. I don't know how that was spelled. I can't, I can't recall um, exactly. And um, he came to my room and that was on Tuesday night to check on me. He also came on Wednesday morning and both he as well as the other nurses were saying if I was feeling well enough um, that I could go home, which was a residence in as it were um on wednesday afternoon and so i did i was able to eat some um i did everything that i needed to do there i i no longer needed iv fluids um, or any kind of iv injections so uh, they went ahead and unhooked me and let me go so i left the hospital um i spoke to dr sakula on thursday um, because i had a weird side effect that happened um, i realized i thought that the toilet seat was heated at the hospital and then I got to the hotel and realized, um, nope, it was my ass. So I have this warm feeling that's happening from on the opposite side from my surgery. So it's on the right side, all the way from my bum down to my foot. Um, it is, it's, since it's been four weeks, I honestly have told people, I don't know if, that, if I'm getting used to it or if it's actually getting better. Um, but anyway, I still kind of have it a little bit, I'm noticing. Um, it's not as, it doesn't seem as strong to me though. So hopefully it's, it's getting better. I think it just must be a nerve thing. There was some concern that it might have been a blood clot, but they went ahead and did an ultrasound and didn't find anything. Everything came up clear, so, and I'm fine. I've been doing all right. So anyway, that was my one weird side effect. Everything else has been relatively normal. Um, I think Dr. Sakula was bothered by the fact that I left as early as I did, but again, I was just following advice from the medical professionals that were around me, and I did my best. Um, he's been great. I've been sending him emails just 
letting him know how my recovery is going um, on a weekly basis. I did that for the two weeks after uh, my surgery. So, um, and that was, that was it. That was all that I needed to do. And then I did follow up with one more email about uh, what kind of workouts I should be doing at this stage in, in time. So um, anyway, um, he's been very communicative via email and when we spoke on the phone there. Um, let's see, what else did I want to talk about when it comes to my recovery? Well, clearly, okay, obviously I still have spasms. Did I already say that? My, my spasms that, you know, you can see that I have them. Um, there's hope that, you know, they would, they would take less than a year for them to completely subside. Um, Dr. Sakula said it could take up to two years. And I'm just trying to stay positive on it. Um, I'd say that prior to surgery, I was about 90% of the time my face was moving. And here we are. I, I think that I'm maybe at a 60% of the time now. Um, sometimes even better than that. As you can tell, um, sometimes when my face, when I'm talking is when it's happening. Um, when I eat, when I go out into sunlight, like the normal times, um, like it used to happen pre-surgery. However, now when I'm resting, when I'm just sitting, reading a book or watching TV um, or planning on going to sleep, um, as long as I'm staying calm, my face stays calm. And that is a, a vast improvement over how things had been for those last few years prior to the surgery for me. So um, like right now here, I'll just, I'll show you for a moment. I'll just stay calm. Blinking isn't affecting it. I think smiling does but depends on the smile. Now, you might also notice when I smile or even when I talk, there's still a lot of latent le loss of movement that's happening on, on the left side of my face. I'm hoping that over time that'll also improve. Um, I don't know if there's some face exercises or something that I can do to help uh, to get things back balanced on both sides, um, but I'm, I'm looking forward to that maybe changing here over the next few months, and I'll keep doing videos so that we can keep track of it and watch it and see what's happening. Um, but anyway, let's see if I can get it to go again. Mm -hmm. Calm, calm, which is what I need to do when I'm driving. So that's another thing too, when I'm driving, uh, I can't sing in the car because when I sing, my face moves. So, um, I need to keep from, <laughs> from singing too much because, or getting too stressed out. I listen to a lot of classical music right now while I'm driving around, um, because it's just important for me to not have my face moving while I'm driving. Anyway, um, so I'll keep doing videos. I'll keep showing what's going on. Uh, as always, please let me know if you have any questions. Was there anything else I was going to talk about? I can't remember. Anyway, I'll do another video in a month. Um, and let me know if you have any questions. As always, I encourage you guys to get out there. Keep doing what you do. If people have questions about what's happening with your face, just tell them what's going on. The best thing we can do with this condition, I think, is to help educate people. Um, I don't think... I know it's, it's easier said than done, but... Um, living life in an embarrassed way or in a hole or um, due to the depression that can happen with uh, what's happening with our faces. Um, it's understandable. It is completely an allowable thing. But do do your best, whether that's through working out to try to get into a better frame of mind and, and put your mental health into a happier place or, you know, just writing things down or doing affirmations, doing meditation, whatever it is that puts you into a happier place, try to do it. I see therapists. I see a lot of therapists. I've talked about that before. Um, I, there's a lot of, of sadness that goes along with this. And I think that it, it, allowing the sadness and expressing the sadness is very important to um, overcoming it and, and, and just getting past it. Um, but there's also help with support. So always, as always, I'm going to put the information, um, down below this video about the support group that I'm a member of on Facebook. Uh, they are a lifeline. They are absolutely fabulous. The information that you get from it, um, where no matter where you are in the world, you're going to find people that you can connect with. Um, we're a small group, a relatively small group, but man, we are mighty. So, um, please, please do join if you're on Facebook. And, uh, and hopefully if you have any questions, um, I'll be happy to, to answer what, what you need and do my best to answer. Um, but as always, keep it up, keep going, and I'll see you guys in about a month. Take it easy.